There are so many different types of controls. Is there a simple way to kind of organize and group them together? The answer is yes. We're going to take a look at that right now. Our objective for you and I in this video is simple. We're going to take a look at a set of controls that you and I can use to implement a secure environment. Now let's start off with the types of controls right here. There's three basic classifications of controls inside of a system. We have physical controls. For example, physically controlling who can get access into a wiring closet or into a data center or physically who can get into a building. Those would be all types of physical controls. We have administrative controls which deal with humans as far as policy is concerned. For example, before we hire a new person, is there a background check going to be done? If there is, that would be an example of an administrative control. Also having policies in place to saying, yes, it's a good idea to do this or a good idea to do that as well as security awareness training. Those would all be examples of administrative controls. And then last but certainly not least, we have our technical controls. And as network engineers and network technicians, this is often the one that we focus on because technical controls deal with implementing the actual enforcement of policy. For example, an access control list on a gateway or a firewall controlling what traffic will go through or access controls inside of a database system. So we have a user like Bob and we can control what he can or can't get to in that system. Sometimes those controls are also referred to as logical controls. One of the benefit of implementing the proper controls is that we can maintain CIA, which is an acronym that has many meanings, but the one I want to point out here is C for confidentiality. And confidentiality implies that only the authorized individuals or systems that should be able to see or access data can access that data. So you and I can implement that through things like authentication. We identify who a person is and then either using a password or multi-factor authentication, making that user prove their identity, thus being authenticated. We can also implement confidentiality by doing things like encryption so that only those systems or entities with the right keys can unlock that data and make sense of it. The I in CIA stands for data integrity. And there's several aspects to data integrity as well. For example, we want to make sure that only authorized users are making changes to that data, which helps to maintain integrity. Also, as our systems write that data to disk or keep it in memory, we want to make sure it has integrity there. And as we're transmitting that data across networks, we want data integrity as well. And some of that can involve hashing algorithms to help maintain that integrity. And the A here is referring to availability. Because the average user on a system, do you know when they want access to their data? <laughs> the answer is right now. And if a system doesn't or can't have access to the data it needs, that's going to cause a system failure, which isn't a very good recipe for success in a business. So by setting up dual backbones and redundant systems, we can help reinforce the fault tolerance of our system so it can take a licking and keep on ticking. It takes a good blend of each of these types of controls, physical, administrative, and technical, to implement a secure system. Now, the reason we actually implement these types of controls is for a certain functionality. And across the top here, I have the functionality or the reasons for those controls. And I'd like to share with you a few examples. Let's start with physical. Let's say we had a fence, a three-foot fence that we put around the building. And a sign on that fence says, please keep out. What kind of a control is that? Well, it's a physical control and it's really just a deterrent. I mean, if somebody wanted to jump the fence, if it's only three feet high, they could very likely get over that fence. Now, the actual building itself, to enter the building, maybe we have a lock on the door. And the lock would be an example of another physical control, but this time for preventative purposes. We're preventing an individual from coming into the building unless they have a key or access card for that building. And to help validate whether or not our security controls are working, we might have some detective controls, and a physical detective control would be, for example, a camera that's recording what's going on as far as who's entering and who's leaving by recording video of the events that are happening. An administrative preventive control would be an example of a background check before hiring someone or before giving someone a specific clearance like top secret or secret. And I suppose that background check could bleed over into the detective as well because there is going to be a background check, which is going to validate whether or not what you reported is accurate. And I suppose as a deterrent administrative control, we could have a warning that says any false information provided is going to be used against you as far as getting this job or this clearance. So the administrative controls are primarily dealing with the human factor, security awareness training for the users, end user agreements, background checks, and things of that nature. 
For technical controls, we have things like login passwords or multi-factor authentication to control who can get into a system. That would be an example of a technical control. It's preventing unauthorized access into the system. A detective control from a technical perspective would be creating log files or audit trails as it's often called. Another technical control that would be over in this column would be making backups. So if we have a system failure or loss of data, we could restore from those backups. Being familiar with these three types of controls and their various functions is important for three basic things for the design, implementation, and operation of a secure system. I had a great time and I'm glad you joined me for this video. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.